Okay, now that we've had a bit of a pause and we're getting ready for your second reading through this second part, learning and success feel possible. The key question there is, can I do this? Is this possible? One of the things we know is likely students won't learn something that they think is impossible or difficult. They've just got this idea, this mindset that it's not possible, it's not achievable, or if they think only certain people can do that. And in your disciplines, you may have heard things like, well, I'm not a writer, I can't do that, or I'm not a mathematician, or I'm not an artist. That's the fixed mindset. The idea that only certain people can do things, that they only certain people have the right skills or the innate ability to do something. What we're after with success and learning feeling possible is having students understand that they can grow in their understanding. They may not become research physicists, but they can understand some basic physics and grow in their understanding of physics so that they can understand the world around them and that there are steps that people have taken to become quite knowledgeable about physics without becoming research scientists. There are some steps that you take as writers to become quite accomplished as writers. We can point to other learners who can say this to them. We can show our own experience and our own growth in the areas in which we've become experts and show that we stumbled, that we took specific actions to make it to a desired outcome. And we can be the supportive kind of person our teachers were and our mentors were and our family were to help get to that desired outcome. Some of this involves helping students understand that can I do it means they will encounter difficulties. That's ordinary. That's expected. And that they believe that by sharing those difficulties to get feedback is less scary than not taking the risk or than taking the risk too publicly where others aren't making the same risks. So this is a great chance to say, we're all going to encounter some difficulties in the next unit. Things will be different from what you've done before. Let's talk about that together. I'll ask you to report to me your difficulties and I will address those anonymously as a whole class. It's also signaling that ability and effort are required. So success can feel possible if you know what kinds of um, effort you're going to exert, how the learning effort, the effortful learning that you're going to do will increase your ability through the practice to do the work when you're called on to demonstrate it. And again, this has three segments we'll take a little look at. Planning for learning. Think about what the chunks and the increments are that you can do to help students move from learning a basic to a middle space to an advanced space. It might be that you're really there to teach the advanced, but you want to remind them what they've already learned incrementally to get to that advanced space. Maybe your course does the thing of going from the beginning to the middle to the end, and you want to make sure that they can see as learners that they're going to make those steps. And in each of those steps, ask them to assess what it is they will encounter as um, interests, curiosities, questions, and difficulties, help them set their own expectations and look at how they're making progress by asking a simple question maybe every week. What did you learn this week that's helping you to move ahead? That's where you're planning for boosting their learning and motivation. When we can see our learning, we're more motivated. Again, that comes to planning activities and thinking about learning to learn as a skill. You've addressed that some with metacognition in earlier pieces, we will, or earlier modules, and we'll come back to that. And it's that idea of wrapping reflection into learning, which you've all discussed already in some early forums, thinking about how as learners you have grown by thinking about your own learning and how you can build that into the courses you're designing. And finally, there's a part of assessment that we can think about here. All these informal, incremental things about learning are actually assessments, are tests. Often we think of tests as in this bottom line, study, 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 and then you give students a test, kind of a high stakes test. But what if we have students study the readings as you're doing this time, um, and then test it out by trying to explain how they'll do atmosphere work in their own courses, and then test it out again by thinking about how motivation might help with that, and then test it out again by saying to a peer, here's some ideas for you. Those are all tests. I can read, see, hear, take in that information, and so can you. So I know that you're learning. So assessment is a bunch of testing, little opportunities along the way. 
And again, learning science helps us know this really does work. So now I want you to take a quick look at a really short blog post about teaching with emotion because so much of this learning that we're talking about that it feels possible um, is about emotion and how to think of emotion in this case is really important. So I'm going to send you off to read Christina Peterson's short little blog piece on this.